Hi everyone, I'm Sharifa from Cornell University. Today I'm presenting Shishu Shuroka Transformative Justice Approach for Combating Child Sexual Abuse in Bangladesh. This work was done with a group of my collaborators from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, Chidang University of Engineering and Technology, Kulna University, St. Francis Xavier University, Charles Dart University, and the University of Toronto. This research explores child sexual abuse in Bangladesh. This work is motivated by authors' lived experience in Bangladesh and growing number of newspaper reports on child abuse. This is a taboo topic and often seen as a spot on survivors' social image. Many survivors and their guardians do not prefer soliciting legal and institutional help. So we ask how the survivors and their parents develop strategies to combat child sexual abuse and how technology can help. So in this work, we investigate three research questions. First, what are the common and most prevalent nature, location, time, and context of child sexual harassment incidents in Bangladesh? What kind of social support is available for the victims and their near ones after the incident? And how can we design a socio-technical arrangement involving the whole community to combat child sexual abuse? For a deeper understanding of child sexual abuse and the usual combating strategies, we conducted a survey with 321 participants and also conducted interviews and focus group discussions with another 40 participants. In the second phase, we designed Shishu Shuroka that helped the survivor and their guardian seek social, medical, and legal support. It is built on transformative justice and shame-based model. It also allows people in the society to engage in supporting the survivors. Then we conducted the user study with 46 participants. From the survey, we found that 138 cases where cousins, uncles, and aunts sexually abused children, another 110 cases where school teachers and private tutors abused children, and another 78 children who were abused by strangers. So 140 children were abused at home, 75 were abused in the shopping mall, bazaar, and local fairs, and 72 children were abused on street. We also found that many parents and guardians wanted to suppress the incident because of shame and lack of legal support. Thus, offenders remain unidentified and continue sexually abusing more children. The parents and guardians often fail to realize the survivor's trauma and distress, and many parents and guardians miss missed the basic understanding of child sexual abuse and thought those were innocent affections from the abusers and therefore the abuse continued. So the findings from the first phase led us to four design goals. First, document the incident anonymously and let the community analyze the patterns and frequency of the child sexual abuse in the area. Visualize and compare area-based cases count on a map. Provide information of legal, medical, psychological, and social support and growing awareness through education. So here is the workflow diagram of Shishu Shuroka that has three major units. First, the posting unit where the users can post about the child sexual abuse anonymously, word of solidarity and support, and question and answer to others' question, and a processing unit which consists of a server and a group of community admin together processes the uh, users post and input before updating the application in an information and support unit that shows case map the contact information of legal and medical help and audio and text based blogs with words of support and questions and answers this is the application end of shishuroka the home page the reporting page case map page solidarity and help corner guardian corner we also found that there were tension between family honor and patriarchal ideology and justice. One of our participants who was a school teacher explained to us by giving example of an incident where a female student was raped by her father and the mother was aware of the incident. Instead of seeking justice for the child, the mother decided to take the child for psychotherapy so that the child would forget the incident or consider it her imagination. The uh, participant explained, this is not the first time I have seen such cases. Often justice for children gets entangled with the family's honor and patriarchal ideology. Imagine the mother would have gone to the police and jailed the father. But what that would jeopardize the family's honor, right? So a delusional nine-year-old is probably less shameful for a family than a victim sexually abused by her family member a mother the mother was thankful that the kid was not menstruating yet so participants expected that the technique of combating child sexual abuse would work on the root causes so that the society would experience a sustainable change and prevail justice
The participants said that children should not be burdened with education on child sexual abuse at a tender age. One of them explained, My daughter is too young to know about such predators. I mean, she cries every morning before going to school. Now, if the school tells her about potential predators, she will be terrified and might not want to go to school again. So, he suggested that school authorities and employees, salespeople at the shop in and near the school, and other people associated with child should be warned educated and trained instead so our study has several takeaways we found that child sexual abuse a taboo topic in bangladesh and the agency of children victim in bangladesh is threatened as their voice are suppressed by their guardians so we ask that technology should be uh, to combat child sexual abuse should be designed in a way that would not further threaten child victims agency and privacy our findings also suggest that tools and technologies intending to combat child sexual abuse in Bangladesh need to engage the influential local entities including school, NGOs, local government, legal authorities and religious leaders in building some social support. They also should integrate local ethics, religious and moral values and cultural norms in design for sustainable social reform. As literature suggests, traditional user-centered design and victim-centric design might lose moral values while satisfying the users. Therefore, our work suggests decentering the design focus from the victim to the whole society by using the model of transformative justice and distributive justice. Thanks for attending this talk. Here I will take questions.